Hi, welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. Today we are taking a look at the discriminant and the nature of roots. And this is part of our journey towards doing complex numbers, which includes imaginary numbers. But what we're focusing on today is the discriminant, which is a part of the quadratic formula that you're very used to using by now, um, but you probably haven't given it much thought before. The discriminant is the part inside of the square root and it is the key part of that formula that tells you what type of roots you're going to get to that equation. Uh, roots mean solutions to the equation. So just to have a look at that quadratic formula for a moment, and you probably haven't given it much thought as to how you get your two roots out of that equation um, for you know most of the quadratics that you come across. But it comes down to this bit here in that um, square root thing that that's what you add on or take away to give you your two different roots. So understanding the nature of this piece here can help us to understand the nature of the roots that we would expect to come out of the solutions for our quadratic. And that bit there is what we refer to as the discriminant. So if you're asked to find the value of the discriminant, that's what we're talking about, that b squared minus 4ac. Now we're going to consider what happens if we get certain values of b squared minus 4ac, so different values of that discriminant, in particular different ranges of values that it might take. So think first of all, what would happen if the discriminant was equal to 0? So in working through our solutions, we would have plus or minus 0, which would make no difference. We would have our two roots are actually the same repeated root. And that root or that those two equal roots would be equal to minus b over 2a. Next, consider if that discriminant was greater than 0. So if we had a positive number up here, we would be able to square root it and we would get two separate roots. Now we can think a little bit more on this and think about whether that number came out to a perfect square or not. So what would happen if we square rooted it? So if that discriminant was a perfect square, such as 9 or 25 or 100, then once you square root it, you get a nice whole number. And that means that our fraction up here, um, when we're looking for those roots, would be uh, real and rational. Now, uh, real is a term that's going to become important now that you might not have had to worry about before, because what we'll look at when we come to our next category, our final category of being less than zero, we'll go into complex numbers. There's just one more thing. If it's not a perfect square, then those real those roots would be real and irrational because we would have a number here that we can't square root um, exactly. And under those circumstances, we would leave our answer as a third rather than rounding it to a decimal uh, point. Um, and you need to be confident with working with thirds as well. And finally, if our discriminant is less than zero, we end up trying to square root a negative number. And that means that we will have two roots that are complex numbers. And for those, we will start looking into imaginary numbers. It's a particularly useful um, field of mathematics that helps us to continue with things like this, where we might have had a quadratic that we needed to solve, but we came to the stumbling block where we couldn't square root a negative number. With complex numbers, it allows us to move on and find solutions to problems that uh, previously we would have been stuck with. Let's take a look at how this might come up as an example question. So if we want to think about what the nature of the roots to this quadratic might be, we first of all work out what the discriminant is. So b squared minus 4ac, well b is 7, 4 times 1 times negative 3 for our 4ac. Brings us to the discriminant being 61. Now that is not a perfect square, so we will have and it is positive, we will have two distinct roots that are irrational. Right, for our next example, for what values of k does the quadratic 4x squared plus kx plus 3 equals 0 have real roots? Now for the roots to be real, that um, discriminant must be 0 or more. So we haven't specified that it's uh, real and repeated, or that it's irrational, or that it's irrational, just that it's real roots. So we need that discriminant to be positive or equal to zero. 
OK, now B is actually K in this instance. We've got 4 times A, which is 4, and C is 3. We need that to be greater than or equal to 0. So k squared minus 48 is greater than or equal to 0. Now this one gets a little bit tricky with working out um, the next steps. This always helps to draw a little picture of what's going on. So this itself is a quadratic, k squared minus 48. Uh, if you started with a normal x squared, or rather in this case it's k squared, um, and then it'd be dropped down by 48. So our axis will go something like this. So you can see where we're looking for when it goes above zero. So it's this portion of the curve here and this portion of the curve there. So we're looking for these two values and we want to go to the left of that one and the right of that one. Now that helps us when we're solving this. So if we start with just thinking if k squared was 48, then k would be, that'll be plus or minus the square root of 48. Um, which we need to manipulate with thirds to get that down into its simplest possible form. So if we start dividing through by any um, square numbers that will go into that, so we can do 48 divided by 4 is 12, and bring that 4 out of the square root and you get a 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. Um, we can go a bit further than that. We can take out another 4. So if we do 12 divided by 4, we're left with 3 bring the 2 outside again, but it gets multiplied by that 2 there. So we've got 4 root 3, and it's plus or minus. So this value here on our axis up here was minus 4 root 3, and this one up here is positive 4 root 3. Now thinking back to the, what we were looking for, the values of the discriminant to be above 0, we want to, it to be this portion of that um, k curve or k squared curve that goes above the line so that means we need to be to the left of negative 4.3 and the right of uh, 4 root 3. So we can finish by writing that inequality of k needs to be less than 4 root 3 and k needs to be more than sorry less than negative 4 root 3 and more than um, positive 4 root 3. So there we have our two um, uh, details for the range of values of k that would give us a discriminant that will be positive and therefore we would get real roots.